So what we're doing here is um, we've provided a mobile classroom so that schools um, can bring their children in out of the classroom that they normally have into a classroom where we're, we're really talking about fire safety and emergent fire safety. So behind me we have um, our main screen, our main television where we'll show a lot of the videos. We've got um, a, quite a good video that's been put together called Lessons from the Past which goes through Black Saturday, Black Friday and Ash Wednesday. Um, not in that order obviously. Uh, and it just goes through a lot of the basic elements of fire. Um, now that was created mainly for the um, secondary environment, however we've noticed that it's actually quite good across, across a lot of audiences, adults and um, some of the upper primary alike. Um, further around, if we do go for a bit of a walk, um, so further around either side of the telly, we have a couple boards um, and they're, uh, they've got dual purpose, so the side that we're seeing now, um, we go through a bit of a timeline, so we're talking about the history of bushfire. Um, so we take the kids through a bit of a self-directed history of bushfire. Uh, and then on the other side, it goes um, all the way up to Black Saturday, so our major event. Um, now on the other side of the board are uh, reversed um, images that actually talk about the fire safety environment. So we're looking at the different risk environments. So we've got examples such as coastal, um, bushland, rural farming land, grasslands, that type of thing. So if we're, look, if we're looking at doing a lesson which is more geared at um, the fire environments and the fire risks, we'll um, flip the boards around so that the students can look through that. Both of the boards have been designed so that they can be self-directed learning as well as being um, presenter interactive. So um, that element uh, is, is what fits in there. If we turn a little bit more down here, we've got some radiant heat boxes. Um, now these will have a little panel um, that Captain Koala will have a little, you know, a couple little words and a couple little, a little uh, description of what radiant heat is and a couple questions for the kids. So what we get the kids to do is we actually get them to stick their hands in, so it's about interactive learning. So you get the kids to stick their hands in the different boxes and that way they can actually look at why the barriers are affecting the heat. So some are hotter than others, why is that? Um, and we talk about the kids, uh, we talk about the concept of radiant heat with the kids. So radiant heat's a hard one to talk about, particularly with the primary school kids. So we thought if we had some kind of a visual interactive, uh, it'll help actually to illustrate or talk about that point. Now we talk about that in relationship to clothing, so protective clothing, but we also talk about it um, in relation to protective features of houses. So, um, you know, where you're talking about um, distancing yourself from radiant heat away or having solid objects in between. Um, one of the other elements that we have here uh, in the um, start of the bus is we actually have a projector that can have a screen um, which is actually rolled up at present. Um, and that can actually kind of set the scene and show some just kind of uh, video images or um, still shot images so that the kids kind of get a bit of a feel of, of what they're going to be talking about. So we're looking at fire safety and that aspect of it. Uh, if we switch around here, we've got a series of um, a couple different iPads in here for the students. So we've got two iPads in each uh, docking station and the kids can go through things like um, the CFA app and look at what incidents are happening around them. They can also look at CFA Connect and they can look at the CFA website. So um, though a lot of our presentation is about the presenter and about the presenter facilitating and, and getting a lot of information with the kids, we also want the kids to be able to actually break apart and have some self-directed learning as well. So that's the idea of the um, iPads. Particularly because that technology, a lot of the kids have iPads and things like that. They're using technology that they're familiar with. The main actual part of the program is delivered via our smart board here. So um, what happens here both in the primary and the secondary environment is we have interactives which the um, presenter can go through but they ask students to actually come up and go through the, the lessons with them so that again you've got that hands-on part of the program. Um, so they go through different elements such as the fire danger rating which is uh, what's up there on the screen now. They look at um, bushfire behaviour, they look at embers, they look at risk and they also look at that kind of personal protective nature. Um, so it's the secondary environment uh, interactive that's actually currently up. Uh, we've got um, a simpler version which is led um, or using the Captain Koala and Friends characters to help teach those basic elements of fire safety. Um, up on the wall here and down the middle, 
we've got some simulation uh, embers. So it goes through a cycle as it travels down the top of the bus um, where you get the oranges and the reds and the yellows to try to simulate um, kind of ember attack but in a non-threatening way. So again we can talk about the idea of ember attack and what that means and we've got that visual for the kids to kind of relate to it um, or the students to relate to it uh, but without making it too scary and without being a threatening environment. Associated with that we have um, a surround sound system that we've put in which for the secondary students we have a soundscape which uh, goes through a simulated fire environment so with the embers and that kind of sound of the fire and the emergency services and the sirens and a family kind of enacting their plan we get to kind of look a bit more deep into the psychological aspect of it but again in a non-threatening way so we want to illustrate that fires you know are dangerous um, they can be very scary and, and that there's a personal element to it so we can use that in the secondary school environment and with adult audiences to uh, talk about that element. One final bit, uh, well we've got two, two bits that are kind of external to the bus. Um, down the bottom here we actually have a, um, a weather station that we've put in. So the weather station's actually outside mounted out the rear of the bus um, that's just uh, clipped in here, sits above the bus. And then what we have here is the actual station itself for the students to go through um, looking at their local temperatures, wind speeds, what the weather's like, um, pressure, that type of thing. So we can really explore the concepts of um, relative humidity, temperature, wind speed, and then how does that react to um, a fire? And also what does that mean for the kind of environment that they're, that they're currently in? Um, and then you can kind of compare that to, okay, what kind of a day are we at today? What does it look like in the fire danger period? Um, and, and relate it back to that local risk. We've also got a television outside, um, which uh, again can show another um, video. So it's just sound, it's not interactive, but it allows us to have multiple groups going through the buses. So we can have a class inside and a class outside with a couple presenters, and they can be taking them through different elements of the actual lesson and then a rotation can occur as well. And that way they can use their local environment as well. So depending on where the bus is stationed, they can actually look at what does the vegetation look like, what's the weather look like in association with the weather station. So um, that's the major components of the actual program. There's a lot there to use. Um, and the, the presenters themselves can use a lot more um, of their own aids that they bring in as well. So we have um, you know, little fire danger rating um, posters that they can use and we've even got the good old-fashioned whiteboard uh, which is the the last bit that we have either side of the um, smart board so if they want to actually write some illustrations or get the kids to do some illustrations uh, we can still use the the basic technologies of a whiteboard so that's the program in a nutshell <laughs>